Something extraordinary happened to me today. And I tell you, extraordinary things don't happen to people like me very often. I consider it to be a good day if I get a total of just 10 bucks. But today, I was given something better than a million dollars. This. I want to read it to you, but first I want to tell you a story. Moving around the streets of this town, you get to hear some amazing stories. And this is the best of them all. It's about a girl I went to school with. Well, when I went to school, that was. You see, we grew up in North Bank, which isn't exactly the educational centre of town. It's more like the crime centre. But when I went to school, I would see Emma around a bit. She tried hard to achieve well at school, but really, what hope do you have when you're from the worst family in the worst part of town? I guess that's what makes this story so incredible. Emma, I need to ask you something. Okay, I don't really like the serious Willie Mino. Yeah, well, this is pretty serious. I want to know, do you think that... Emma... Will you marry me? Marry you? Yeah, will you marry me? You don't have to do this, Will. Well, I know I don't, but I want to, though. <laughs> Answer me, will you? But why? Don't you remember who I am? I told you, that's irrelevant now. I love you, Emma, and I want everyone to know. I don't love you because you're perfect. No, you love me because you're perfect. Oh, William, I don't think that this is right for you. Just imagine what people will say. What can I say to convince you that this is what I want, Emma? <sighs> okay, this is what you can do. Tell me the story of William and Emma up to this point, and if, even after rehearsing all of that, you can still ask with your whole heart, then I'll be convinced. <sighs> okay, let's start with the day we first met. No, start with the day you first heard of me. <sighs> all right. You might not think there's anything too unbelievable about a girl being proposed to, but it was no ordinary guy who proposed to her. The day he first heard about her, it was the same day I first saw William in person. I was bunked down in a park near the main street of North Bank that evening. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This was the day he first heard of her. William? William? Yeah, Dad, what's up? Um, sit down, please. <clears throat> now, William, you know I've been overseeing that project in North Bank? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised you made it out of that place alive every day this week. The news has been all there's a shooting. Where? In North Bank. There's a drug raid. Where? North Bank. There's a riot after a football match. North Bank fans, of course. I get it. It's not the most desirable part of town. But that's what gets to me each day. Is this a guilt thing? You might be the mayor, but you can't solve everyone's problems. People make their own choices. Yes, but you don't understand. <coughs> when I drive through there, there's hardly a soul to be seen during daylight hours. I guess the people have a reason to live in the dark, but every day I just see this one girl. And I can tell just by looking at her that she's from that typical North Bank scene. But I can also see in her eyes that she's hurt and lost and just waiting for someone to help her. Today I passed her in the same place, but this time there was a middle-aged man, her father I guess, standing over her, scowling and pushing a bag into her hands. As I stopped at the lights, I could see in my mirror that she refused to take it several times, but there was something that he said that made her take it from him, and she headed off down the street. I can only assume that this excuse for a father is making his daughter do his dirty work and forcing her into sin and danger. What kind Dad, of- Dad, stop and think for a second. What can you really do about it? I know, that's what's really eating me up. There's nothing I can do. I thought about turning my car around and bringing her to the safety of our house. Yeah, the news would love that too. Dan, let's be realistic. You can't save her. I know, but 
Son, you can. <laughs> Whoa, what? Okay, so it probably isn't ideal according to the general population, but think about it. It wouldn't be seen as weird for someone your age to befriend her. So you want me to go to North Bank? and befriends a stranger who potentially has a criminal record that could rival the Lord of the Rings for length. Well, yes. Right, I see. Look, I don't want to push you, so I'll let you think about it. Yeah, I guess it is reasonable. It's all part of your kingdom, isn't it? When do you want me to go? I have Monday afternoon off next week. Well, I was thinking that maybe you could go now? Right now? It's dark already. You want me to be on the news too? <laughs> you'll, you'll be quite safe. You know that my security is at your disposal. Yeah, okay. But I think I'd better go take the taxi or the bus or something and probably get changed as well because I don't know that turning up in style would be the best way to do so. You're a wise boy. Thank you, son. The father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. I saw him in town that night. He looked everywhere for her. Just picture it. The mayor's son. Heir to a fortune beyond my imagination. And there he was. Scouring the faces of addicts passed out behind dumpsters. His home is the most extravagant building in the entire city. And yet, he was there with those of us who had a park bench and a newspaper for our home. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. I saw you getting off the bus from through my window. You still didn't fit in the area, you're just too different. And there's something about you that makes you memorable. Yeah, well... <laughs> If I was so noticeable, the least you could have done was to help me out. Nobody there wanted to know me. The only attention I was given was from guys who wanted to bash me. Were you scared? A little. But when you're about Dad's business, you're generally pretty safe. I didn't exactly feel at home there, though. But you kept coming back. Every day was a trial. Dad could see I was so uncomfortable. But I gave him my word. And then finally... I found you. Dad, she's beautiful. William, where have you been? Good afternoon, William. Oh, hey, Mrs. Jones, I have news. I'm in love. William? <laughs> oh, wow, that's excellent news, dear. Isn't that nice girl from the Polo Club? The Polo Club? Nah, she's from North Bank. North Bank? Yeah, you know North Bank. It's said to be the yes, most... Yes, of course I know North Bank. How did you find this girl? Well, I didn't at first. My dad did. It's true. How? Well, he was driving past and saw her transporting a package between some people in the area. Well, William, this is a great joke, but we have some business we need to attend to. A joke? This is not a joke. You mean to say you're seriously in love with a girl who your father saw probably engaging in criminal activity in the worst <coughs> suburb in town? Yes. Well, I think that's extremely foolish. What's her financial situation? Well, she's in a bit of debt, but she's trying to pay it off. And what does she do for work? Oh, nothing in particular. Just what she can find from day to day. William, she will never pay off her debts. What about her lifestyle? Is she like most of the people over there? With a significant criminal record? Well, what does that matter? What does it matter? What type of things are listed on this record? Well, a few things. Mostly to do with narcotics and fraud. Wonderful! A fraudulent drug addict. I hope you enjoy this little fling with this girl who's riddled with debt, disease and depravity. Grow up, William. And as for you, you're just going to sit there and offer no words of protest? This business is between my son and I. But my son is a wise boy and I trust his judgement. You're mad. You're going to make this town the laughing stock of the nation. <laughs> well, that was a bit unexpected. I'm not surprised. Be ready for plenty more of that, actually. Son, I'm so glad that you found her, but you know that there are indeed issues that may, need to be addressed. Yeah, I know, Dad. We need a plan. Her debts are easy to take care of. Even her health issues can be addressed, but her crimes cannot be fixed so easily. 
But Dad, you're the highest judge in the whole region. Can't you just let it slide? No, son, I can't. I am merciful, but I am also just. She may be sorry for her crimes, but the penalty still needs to be paid. <coughs> The penalty. Wow, that's something none of us are ready to face. But justice demands that a penalty be given. And not all the money in the world can change that. Justice brings a penalty, but it also brings redemption. for a long time, so I'm giving you a, him a chance here. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. But I don't understand why you wanted to see me. Emma, I've been the legal advisor for William's family for many years, and somehow that now includes you. So be thankful I do want to see you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Look, Emma, you have a list of charges here, mostly petty, thankfully, but there are some that will undoubtedly see you facing a penalty. Be prepared for hefty fines and community service at the least. I know I deserve it, so I understand that you can't do anything about it. No, I can't. I will be making a special request of the judge, though, on behalf of William. What? William has asked me not to draw out the trials with undue arguing, but simply to plead guilty and have the rulings and punishments handed down quickly. Handed down to him. To him? Yes, Emma, to him. His father is a judge, and he's assured me that this is an acceptable path to take. How can this be? He doesn't even have a speeding ticket to his name, and now he wants to take the punishment for my life of crime? Don't worry, I think it's ridiculous too. He must really love you, Emma. Emma, are you okay? He loves me, he really loves me. He loves her. <coughs> to be innocent, but to take the punishment for another person's crimes. What a demonstration of perfect love. <coughs> to be the recipient of such amazing love. What a glorious redemption. But God commended his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Remember how much you stank every day after finishing community service? That was bad. Yeah, it could have been worse. It was, those six months. Oh, my holiday in Long Bay. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty difficult. But I think the worst part was the way people would look at me. The way they still look at me. And that's the thing, William. If you marry me, it'll be like that for the rest of your life. Well, that doesn't matter. Not one bit. Now, I think we've done enough storytelling and it's time for you to answer me. Now I guess he wants to marry her. Are you for real? Crazy, hey. 
I mean, my wife may be the world's biggest snack, but at least she's got some class. So he's dad, pulls funding from my company, and here I am struggling by while he pays for some gold digger to the high life. I work my way out of that place, and something would just get it handed to them for free, at the expense of my business. Well, if you need to talk to someone about your issues, my wife is excellent at giving advice. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be able to give you some too. Listen here, punk. I don't need advice. I need money. So unless you can direct me to someone who doesn't waste their money on trash, then I'm out of here. I've got a business to run. Lucky I didn't make her. Hey Sarah, would you mind just popping in here for a second? Is anyone else in the office this afternoon? Oh, okay, we'll bring them in too. Okay, thank you. See you in a minute. Ladies, this is the happiest day of my life. Today I can announce that my son is to be married and there is no expense to be spared and no time to lose. When were they engaged, sir? Last night. And do you have the invitations already? Why wait? Don't you need like a venue or something before you give out invitations? <laughs> oh, it'll be right here. This house is big enough to accommodate all of the guests three times over. What? And what better place to celebrate than in your own house? What about the date? Next weekend. Catering? <laughs> Organised and paid for this morning, while the invitations are being printed. Sounds like you don't need our help with much. Actually, I do. You are some of my most trust, trusted and long-standing employees. Your family to William and I, and we would like for you to hand deliver some of these invitations. So please don't worry about your work for this afternoon, and please take these invitations to our friends and community members. We'll express post the rest tomorrow. It would be our honour, sir. Thank you, ladies. Oh, and remember to tell them that the wedding is next weekend, so we need an immediate answer about their attendance. Thank you, ladies. Imagine receiving a personal invitation to the mayor's house. Of course, people like me have no hope of receiving one. We don't deserve it. But just imagine. Reserve too. <laughs> yes, so of course I like the garden. Yeah, renovators delight. How about this one? Acquired yesterday <laughs> on ten acres. It's nice, also. Anyway, sir, I do have an invitation for you. Oh yeah, that meeting. I know. No, it's for a wedding. William's wedding. William, isn't he only like twelve years old? No, he was twelve when you met him twelve years ago. <laughs> Ah, okay. So I should probably find more age-appropriate birthday cards in the future. <laughs> Perhaps. But he's getting married next week and he would really love you to be there. Oh, nice. Nice. But yeah, next weekend... Sir, this is the wedding of the mayor's son. I'm not sure why you're being hesitant. Well, I'm a busy man. 
It's not easy being as successful as me. So, the mayor himself is inviting you to the most lavish wedding ever hosted in this city, and you're too busy to come? Look, lady, like I said, ten acres. Do you think it's going to landscape itself? Surely this isn't as important as the way of the mayor's son. I'll decide what's important in my life, not you. Now get out! Okay, sir. May apologies to William. <laughs> is a privilege that nobody deserves. Not even them.
Oh, well, that's not what I'm here about. But you know full well that the mayor does not approve of such places, let alone provide funding. Well, he's a downright fool. Doesn't he realize how much money I could make him? I don't think that really matters to him. But ma'am, I told you I was here for another reason. I really don't want to hear it, girl. I think you did. Try it. Well, the man's asked me to personally deliver this invitation to his son's wedding. You've got to be kidding me. You think that after ruining my business twice, disgracing our city by wasting money on that loser from North Bank, that I would want to be anywhere near him? I know business is tough right now, but you have to handle your affair honorably. Then I'm sure he'd give you his full support. But obviously he still, still values your friendship because he and William would like you to be there. Well, I don't want to be there. And now that I'm out in the cold, again, I will be working every spare minute to try to find someone who will back my business. I will not be attending. Please, I'd like you to reconsider. It may be a good opportunity for you to restore your friendship with the other community members. Reconsider? Reconsider? That man has ruined my life! And you! You! What do you do about those of us that struggle through every day? I just do my job! Well, your job destroys lives! Now let me give you a taste of your own medicine! <laughs> Ladies, welcome back. How did you go? Ah, uh, sir, we have some bad news. Oh, what's the problem? And where's April? That's the bad news, sir. She went to deliver an invitation and it wasn't received kindly. She's being attacked. When we were loaded, we found her took her straight to the hospital. Well, is she alright? She will be. I'll go to the hospital immediately. We need to inform William and Emma so they can come too. I'll go and find them. Thank you, Sarah. Tell me, Audrey, how did this happen? Well, she was delivering an invitation to Veronica. From Viacot Industries? I see. Go on. Well, apparently, Veronica thought that an invitation from one of your personal assistants would mean the approval of her community centre. She actually thought I would approve that? I guess so. She thought it was quite audacious of you to send an invitation after supposedly ruining her life. She ruined her own life. I simply wanted her to know that we still valued and appreciated her in the community. Sir, you're a good mayor and a good judge. And a lot of people think that they can use that for their selfish purposes. They do, sadly. And it breaks my heart to see that today others have suffered for it. Working for you is a privilege. But it was also a choice that we made. We'll take what comes. Yes, but we still need to ensure that Veronica is detained and dealt with appropriately. She has continually rejected my help because she thinks that her way is better. But she has now brought herself to a place where she will soon understand the true consequences of going her own way. Now meet us out the front in five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, so tell me, ladies, how did you fare this afternoon? Well, only a little better than April, really. How so? Who did you visit, Sarah? I visited Arthur Prince. Oh, lucky you. Does he have any new self-portraits on the wall? If, uh, <laughs> if selfies count, yes. Of course. So I suppose that he was glad and surprised to hear that William's getting married? Yes, very. I hope he brings an appropriate card to the wedding. Well, sir, you see, he says he can't come. Can't come? Yes, apparently he bought some new properties which need landscaping. He receives a personal invitation to my son's wedding and he says he can't come because he's too busy pulling weeds out of the garden? Yes, sir. This is absurd. Audrey, please tell me that you have better news. I'm afraid not, sir. I visited William's childhood friend, Russell. And what's his excuse? Well, as you know, he was recently married. Yes, I was very much looking forward to meeting his wife. So was I. Until I met her. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, apparently Russell's marriage is more of a commitment than he realised. His wife has these household tasks planned for the day, which he's obliged to assist with. How ludicrous! These people are making a mockery of my son. I have given everything for the people of this town, as has my son, and they can't even find the time to attend his wedding. 
I would not have an empty house for my only son's wedding. Obviously those who the community deem to be worthy of respect have no idea how depraved they really are. Ladies, take these invitations. Go into town and find the poor, the sick, the homeless, the unworthy, and invite them to come into my house for the wedding. My house must be full. This is the greatest celebration that this town has ever known, and we will share it with everyone. Yes, sir, but what if we invite too many people? Should we limit the invitations to just some groups? There will be room for anyone who accepts the invitation. Anyone at all. I will make room. Very well, sir. It's true. Just as I was tipping the coins out of my cup to count up my earnings for the day, this lady approached me, greeted me kindly. I was happy because I thought this nice lady was going to give me a generous donation. And then she gave me this. I was so excited, I threw my cup up into the air. Coins went flying everywhere. I jumped up and hugged her so tightly that she started to gasp for air. Or maybe it was just the shock that left her breathless. I don't know. But she left me with a huge smile on her face and she said, I guess I'll see you there. Yes, yes, you will see me there, I shouted. Well, I told you I wanted to read it to you. So here goes. By special request of the mayor, you are cordially invited to attend the wedding of his son William to Miss Emma Adams. The wedding is to take place at the mayor's residence next Saturday and you are invited to attend just as you are. Just as I am, but I can't turn up to the mayor's place in these rags. Yet. I can't afford anything else. I guess I just have to do what it says and go as I am. So the big day has arrived and a lot of people have said that the reason why I'm marrying William today is because I'm after his money or a comfortable life or prestige. But that's not true. It's not about the material things. They will eventually disappear. This marriage is truly about love. William loved me enough to rescue me from my life of depravity, to pay off my debts and to make me a part of his family. What kind of a man does that? No ordinary man. How can I not love him in return?
You came. Yes, I did. I've never seen a greater love than what you have for this woman, William. I wanted to be a part of the celebration. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. Tell me, is Mr. Jones going to be joining us today? No, he still thinks I'm crazy for being here myself. He says it's a bad look and that it'll embarrass the family. I kept encouraging him to come, but he doesn't want to because I guess he can't believe that this marriage is real. Maybe, but I hope he has a change of heart. Welcome, Ryan, Andrew. Good afternoon, miss. What's up? Excuse me? Excuse you what? Uh, if I may interrupt. The mayor's instructed that all guests be provided with new garments for the celebration today. New? New and already tailored just for you. But, but haven't... Never you mind, sir. Just head into the change room and try it on. Okay. Wow. Thanks. Don't thank us. Thank William. He's provided them all. Wait. You invite me here and then tell me I'm not good enough to come in? That's not how it is, sir. Yeah, actually, I think it is. Seriously, what's wrong with me? You do realise that this is the wedding of the mayor's son, right? Yes, and? Sir, we know that you cannot afford the appropriate garments yourself. So, that is why they're provided for you. They're all yours, free of charge. But what's wrong with the way I am? <laughs> Look, I've worked hard to create this image. I'm a self-made person and I quite like my style. It's not my problem if you don't appreciate good taste. It's not about personal preference, sir. It's about what is acceptable in the mayor's house. Who does this guy think he is? He thinks he's the mayor because he is the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't tell me what's acceptable or not. He's not the boss of me. <laughs> well, actually he is. And if you're to come into his house, he wants you to come as you are, but be prepared to accept the gift of appropriate attire. Yeah, well, I didn't come to a wedding to get a gift. I came for the food and the party. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot join in the festivities or enjoy the banquet unless you're wearing the clothes that have been provided for you. Oh, yeah? Watch me. Hello, Ryan. Oh, hey, you must be William. Can you go me a drink? Look, I don't know if you've misunderstood, but there are new clothes provided for you. Audrey and Sarah have them right there for you. Yeah, look bro, thanks, but no thanks. I like my style, so I'm sticking with it. Well, that's not really an option. If you come into my father's house, you must wear the appropriate garments. And at the moment, you're not. Look, do you want me to take this up with your dad? Because I will. Where is he? I'll teach him about appropriate garments, right after I have that croissant. No, you won't. Hey, what are you doing? You can't throw me up. I'm hungry. It's simple, just put the clothes on. No way. You think you're too good for me? We've got the wrong way around, Missy. <laughs> Why can't people just accept a gift? There have been quite a few already like that, sir. They're too proud, I guess. You know the saying, I felt like a new person? I understand this saying entirely now. This suit is the most expensive piece of clothing I've ever seen. And it was provided for me at no cost. Rumour has it that it cost William all of his personal wealth to buy these clothes for the guests. What kind of a person does that? I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Excuse me, could I have your attention please? Friends, I want to thank you for being here and joining in the celebration on this wonderful day. I want to thank you not only for accepting the invitation, but for also accepting the gifts provided for me. I know that I speak for my father as well when I say that the only thing that could have brought us greater joy would be to see our entire town represented here today. That's right. Out in the streets, people have been saying that they aren't attending because they weren't selected to attend. But as you all know, the truth is that everyone has been invited. But friends, we are so glad that you are here and we are ready for the celebration to begin. William, it's time for you to go and get your bride and bring her into our home and family for good. Friends, 
Please come inside as we await the bride's arrival. Are you ready for the marriage supper of God's son? Or will you be late? Or will you say that you can't come? God is preparing a banquet for the glorious day when his son will come to claim his bride, the church, his redeemed people. Will you be there?